Hello and welcome back to my RTS tutorial in the Unity series. I thought I'd say that wrong for a second. Uh, today, basically, we are doing a cursor GUI, so it should be a quick one. So basically, as you'll see, the cursor is a like a little golden arrow. But if we click on the uh, peasant, for example, uh, now if we hover over the wheat, we get a like little sickle icon. Uh, we hover over the tree, axe, rocks, we get a mine. And then that, if we click and we, if we hover over an enemy, we have a spear, because I suppose the spear would be the preferred method of killing in the ancient world. But if we do it over hoplites, as you'll see, there's some variation. We don't get a, the uh, sickle or resource icons, because hoplites can't gather resources, so we just get that, but we still get the spears. Uh, if we select the archers, I haven't actually got an arrow, but it sort of looks like an arrow, so I'm going to play that off as being entirely intentional. But as you can see, again, we don't get to uh, have the sickle or anything because we can't gather icons. And if we select multiple types of units, uh, it just basically just has the go-to icon. But I'm not sure that it... Uh... But... Oh, what was the word? Never mind. I'll, give it. I'll remember it later. So yeah, I'm going to show you how all that is done. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the quick changes I made. Well, one quick change, basically, uh, in the selection manager. We changed the more than one type selected to if types.count equals one. Because uh, for the new code, so basically it'll tell us if we got more, if we got one type selected, then it'll return false. So we haven't got more than one type selected, but else it'll return true, so we have a normal one, so like one type selected. Uh, this was basically to deal with uh, with how I draw the icons. Basically, if we've got no uh, unit selected, uh, it will... If we, if we had kept with the old code, it would have just said, even if we didn't have anything selected, it would do all the changing or staying or whatever. So basically, yeah, just change this line to equals equals one rather than more than equals one. Okay, and... Another quick implementation we've done. Uh, we've basically, oh, we, I, have added uh, a resource class and a number of child classes. So here yeah, we've got one for stone, which basically just inherits it. We don't have anything uh, really in them at the moment. We've just got a string for my type. And as we'll check, see on the prefabs here, we can see that we've got type gold, uh, gold again, iron, stone, and I think we've got wheat as a resource here. Because that's basically how that's this is basically the class I'm going to use for anything that's to do with the resources when we're gathering them. But for now, it's just used to get the type to determine what kind of icon you uh displays when you hover over it. So that is what's that there, and there's one for tree as well. So that's why that's there. Okay, and now onto the main changes to the GUI manager. Uh, I think I can just zoom in. View. We'll be able to zoom in. Yeah, hopefully this will look better for you. Or make it easier to read or whatever, because I've, I've been meaning to do it for a while, but I forgot to. Yeah, so basically, we've got a uh, public texture 2Ds, uh, a load of them, just so we can end up just so we can assign them in the inspector. Got one for pickaxe, for stuff you'd mine, sickle, for wheat, arrow, for... That's like basically the gold arrow, which just like points down to the location. Uh, axe for jumping down trees, and spears for attacking stuff. These are basically just the different cursor icons we can have. And we've got a couple of new methods. We've got the side cursor icon. and detect objects at cursor. So first things first is uh, the detect object cursor, which is called in the update function. Uh, if the selecting mode is selecting units, so if say we were building or changing tiles, we wouldn't need these particular icons. You could have like, you could uh, edit this code to have maybe different kind of construction icons or whatever, you know, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but yeah. For now, I will just check this. So it's uh, similar to the selection manager code of the selection raycast, where basically, so 
yeah, so sorry, uh, it is similar. So you'll see that as I go through it. Uh, first off, we check is more than one type selected. So if there's more than one type selected, we can't like use the dual tips to indicate what will happen. Uh, I believe if we do, like, say if you had more than one type selected, say a worker and an archer, and you right clicked on a resource, then the worker would still go and gather the resource. Whereas the archer would just move to it, but the tooltip wouldn't display. That still happens. But it's just because, uh, basically, archers can't gather it, so we don't display it. Uh, you could have, like, a, a flashing type thing that switches between the two icons, if you wanted to. I didn't do that, just to save time. And you get the idea of what I'm doing here, basically. Okay, so if we just have one type of unit selected, we grab the mouse position. We fire a raycast at that mouse position of a zero length. So basically, we just basically uh, you see where the mouse is or that little arrow. That's the raycast is just there, and it's like detecting. All right, is there anything at this x and y coordinate that we can hit with a raycast? Uh, and yeah, so we get tiles, resources, units, stuff like that. That's basically how that works. And we try and get a game object from that, and then. Basically, we surround it in the try and catch just in case we don't actually hit anything. So, if we do hit summit, we go through this. So, we get the game object. We debug it log, log its name. We don't need to do that. That's just for me to see what if it's actually hitting stuff. Uh, this is the select. We get the selected units. Uh, so, if we have unit selected, then if the unit type is a worker, as I said last episode, uh, it you can just get the first one because and because there'll only be one because more than one selected equals false here, as we can see by the cells bit. And then uh, basically, we check in from the hit object. So this is what the raycast is hit, like what it is. So is it a resource? And then if it'll do, it'll pass the type of the resource to the side cursor icon method. If it's a unit, uh, for the moment, we just say, all right, any unit is an enemy, so we'll display the spear icon. We'll add some kind of uh, validation to make sure that it's an enemy unit when we add enemies, God knows how long down the line. And if it's anything else, basically, we just add a uh, blank, we send an empty string. So that's a, all right, we'll draw an arrow instead. And similarly for the hoplite and the archer, if we hit a unit, we send the enemy cursor icon. We'll set the cursor icon to display the spear for the enemy cursor. And if it's anything else, we just display the arrow. And we have a catch to just say, all right, something's gone wrong. We've not got a valid object. We're just going to display the arrow. And now we set the cursor icon. So passing the string that declares that, that basically we use to work out what kind of cursor we need to draw. So if the string passed in is iron, stone, or gold, we draw a pickaxe. Uh, basically, for set cursor, cursor dot set cursor, you pass in the texture. Uh, this vector two indicates the. Uh, I think it's the offset of the texture to uh, where the. Uh... All right. So. Uh, basically, you know how the uh, arrow, basically the mouse is an arrow. That's basically, the vector is basically specifying the offset to put the uh, point at, so if you get my meaning. And cursor mode .force software forces the use of software cursors. I'm not sure what it was, but it needed to be there. And force software seemed a better option than force hardware. Don't ask me what they do, because I don't know. Google it. But it works, so it's fine. And again, we've got string for wood, string for wheat, so, so we set sickle, spear, and the arrow. Arrow is probably not a good name, considering we actually have archers. So I might have to think about that one. Oh, yeah, and oh, basically that's it. Pretty simple stuff. Basically just grabbing a string from whatever object we've hit, we've raycasted. So, and that'll, basically, based on the object we've hit, it'll decide which kind of cursor icon we've got. And yeah, so next time we will be doing uh, some adding functionality to uh, the GUI. So say 
if we wanted to patrol or add a button to basically do an action. So a patrol, guard, uh, stuff like that. S suicide, I guess, would be another one that you could have. Uh, just trying to think of them. So yeah, look forward to that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, go check out my stuff on itch.io. All the links will be in the description because that makes me happy. And, you know, money and popularity from people online who like my shit. You know, that's stuff that I'm aiming for. <laughs> and I enjoy it too. It's nice to have, like, uh, it's nice to do a project because this is like my little Zen corner where for maybe an hour or two a week I can work on something that like this that I don't have any. Well, it's not like. It's not like uni work where I'll get a grade on it. It's just I can do it to my own standard. I decide what I'm doing and no one can stop me. So, yeah, it's nice. Thank you for watching. Bye.